All right. It's official. It's 2021. And we are officially, we are officially starting the new year. Actually, it's a few hours after the fact. But uh, I wanted to welcome you if you're watching this on the replay. Uh, congratulations on making it to 2021. It's been a crazy, crazy year. And today, what I'm going to be talking about is really how to plan your first quarter in 2021 so we can crush 2021 as far as our business goals. This also lends itself to really talking about what we can do in our personal life, um, but we are going to apply it to our business because I think that's what a lot of people want to do is like, how do I how do I take this, this whole year and how do I break it down into bite-sized pieces and how do I break it down into the first quarter? What should I be focusing on? So that's what we're going to be doing here in our official first Friday jam session of 2021. So welcome and uh, thanks so much for hanging out. So what we're going to do here before we get rocking and rolling uh, in the new year is uh, I'd love to know uh, if you are here live, if you are, drop it in the comments and also let me know one win that you had in 2020. Just one win, and it could be small. It could be so small. It doesn't have to be this massive win. What is something that you're reflecting on and you're going to look back on and go, man, that was a good thing, right? That was a good thing that happened. Um, I know a lot of times, you know, we can look at, you know, all of the bad things that happened in the previous year, but we also have to look at like, okay, those were bad things, but what did they allow me to see? or recognize so I could change things because a lot of times we just get comfortable. It's true. We just, we just get comfortable. And, uh, when we get comfortable, then we don't really strive to, to improve ourselves or improve our business. Um, so sometimes we need a little shake up and, uh, hopefully we're able to look at today and go, you know what? Last year, there was a lot of low moments just globally and in our country and just, just crazy year, right? But what can we, what can we take away as a positive from that? So, uh, anyway, thank you so much for, uh, being here. I just wanted to again, say thank you so much for being one of our coffee talk, uh, coffee. What are we calling ourselves? Our morning crew. Uh, and again, if you want to join us and you're just tuning in for the first time, or if you want to share this with someone to kick off their year, uh, right. Um, then I'm going to give you the link to go over to our little special page here, which is uh, takeactioncrew.com. And that's where you can join the crew absolutely free. And uh, there's also a, a special smart player there that you can go back in all of the archives of the coffee talks. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Share it with a friend. Okay. Share it with a friend. We'd love to be able to, uh, to really hang out with more people like us and uh, talk about this business thing here in 2021. All right. So uh, today is our Friday Jam session. This is where if you have any questions, drop them in there. But our main, our main question, our main theme here is going to be this. And it actually came from our last coffee talk. Uh, and the question was, it was really, what would, what would you do to prepare and plan for 2021? And so what I did is I took a little different spin on it and was like, okay, how can we create a Q1 roadmap for 2021? See, a lot of times people want to look at the big, big, big picture, which is either a year, two years, five years down the line. And I'm, I'm cool with that. But I think what we need to do is we need to set our sights on what is our goal for the year. And that goal a lot of times comes down to money, like how much money do I want my business to be making per month, right? Per And then for the year. But then what we need to do is we need to get realistic with that. And then we need to start looking at how are we going to make that happen, right? So it's always asking those questions. And I want you to get really good at asking yourselves questions this year, all right? Whenever you're just in doubt, you're not sure what the next move is, ask yourself the question, right? And that question could be, what's my next move, right? Where am I right now? And, you know, a good exercise to do might even be this, sit down for 15, 20 minutes and write down exactly what you are doing right now or where you are right now in your brand building journey. 
All right. What do you have already built? What don't you have built? And then from there, look and see where you want to go. Now, today, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to give you two things. There's two things that, and we're talking business here. There's only two things that I am focusing on. Now, there's things inside of these two things, but there's only two things that I am ever, ever thinking about or focusing on. And then I'm going to ask myself a filtering question, which I'll give you guys that. And then that's it. And then that's the only thing that I'm going to do moving forward in 2021 and in the first quarter. But then I'm going to work backwards and go, okay, what out of those two areas, what are the things that I'm going to be working on, right? And that's what I want you to do. So this isn't about me, right? I'm just using me as an example. This is about you and how you can create the plan for your business in uh, 2021, but also in Q1, okay? So... With that being said, if you're just tuning in and you just uh, uh, either seen the notification or whatever, drop in the comments, what is your biggest win? Or it could be the smallest win, but what's the what's the win of 2020 for you? Okay. And it could just be that you, uh, uh, you know, you discovered that you can build a brand online and now you're deciding to do it. Maybe that's the win. Maybe it's the revelation of that, right? Like maybe that's it. Okay. So go ahead, drop it in the comments. I'd love to see it. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take a sip of coffee because this is a morning coffee talk. Uh, what's up, Gio? Good morning and happy new year to you, brother. How you doing? Agnet, happy new year to you. Jamie says, built my email list to over 5,000 subscribers, which is, it, it makes me so happy. It's so awesome because there's so much that you can do with that 5,000 subscriber list right now. And, uh, and I know that you are, and you will, because you're in the Academy. I know that you're one of our brand creators, Academy, uh, members, uh, and you're just a go-getter. So, uh, can't wait to see where things take us in 2021 with building your brand. Um, let's see here. Oh, Brandon, what's up? Uh, what's up, man? Happy new year. Happy new year to you. Uh, oh, Karen's in the house. Uh, this is not really a small thing. I was looking at my website where it was when I started compared to now just eight months ago. It was a dream. Now it's a reality. I still have a long way to go. Um, and yet I have made a lot of progress. And I think that's another good exercise for all of you to do. Where were you last year? Where were you last year at this time, at this moment? Where were you? And I'm, I'm really looking at, I mean, you can do this in all areas of your life, but where were you in your brand building journey, right? Maybe that's something that you could do because then you go, wow, look at all of the progress that I've gained. And uh, the funny thing is, is uh, a lot of times we don't realize how much progress we've made because we don't actually document those steps or we don't celebrate those wins. And those wins could be, I picked my domain name out and I bought it on GoDaddy. That's a win, guys. I created my logo for my website. That's a win. That's a, that's a step that we're taking, okay? So I want you guys to think about that. Uh, Brandon, uh, my accomplishment last year was to join BCA. I have had a number of ideas over the years and never seemed to commit since joining. I have, a, I have new inspiration and motivation. I got a domain, been learning WordPress, writing content now, and planning to launch Sunday. Thanks, Scott and crew. Brandon. Let's have a round of applause. I friggin' love that. That's awesome. Uh, and you know, a lot of people, they kind of him and haw and it's normal, right? You want, you got, you got to get the research done and you got to get, I don't know. But then once you make that commitment and you are doing what you're doing right now, man, oh man, we can start to play in the game now. Right. I talk a lot about that as far as, you know, we can sit here on the sidelines, look at people that are playing the game, but once we get in the game, man, oh man, it gets fun. Now, yeah, there's going to be times that you're like, man, I did that thing and it didn't really work, but it's okay because you probably learned from it. Uh, so Brandon, thanks for sharing that, man. And thanks for being part of BCA. I appreciate you. And uh, we will be having a uh, an office hours call coming up. So I'd love for you to hang out with us there and tell us a little bit more about where you're at. Uh, Jake, uh, started an email list and email uh, multiple times per week, have only 19 subscribers, but it's exciting. And you know what? I'm glad that you brought that up, Jake, because here's the deal. 19 subscribers. Some people be like, it's nothing. 19 people, just like you, and just like me, 19 people, right? Communicate to those 19 people. I don't care if there's 19 or 1900 or 19,000. We need to create that relationship with those people, but also practice, 
practice writing, practice making offers, practice, practice, practice. You know what they say, practice makes perfect, right? Um, cool. Uh, Roland says, happy new year, everyone. 2020 win. Finally started to communicate with my subscribers. That's awesome. That's awesome. And Karen says, uh, hey, Brandon, pat yourself on the back, man. It's a good job. All right, cool. Let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and let's officially kick off this Friday jam session. And, uh, we will, uh, we're, we're going to talk about how to, uh, how to really figure out what we're going to be doing, uh, in the first quarter. And I'm going to be focusing on two different areas. So you guys know how it goes. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments. We're going to answer those here on this Friday jam session, but I am going to officially kick this off. So I need to pause, take a sip of coffee and thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on new year's day. It's a good morning. All right, here we go. Let me get my notes up and off we go. And we are, let's see here. Cool. Got it. All right, here we go. All right. Welcome to this Friday jam session. If you are listening to this on the podcast, which if you are listening to it on iTunes or Stitcher, then you're listening to it on the podcast. But hey, welcome. And uh, this is being recorded actually on New Year's Day morning. Now you're listening to this later, but it's still going to be very useful because today's jam session is going to be this right here. How to create a Q1 roadmap to crush 2020 one in your business. And that's what we're going to be talking about. That was a question that came up the other day. And uh, that's what we're going to dig into. I have two areas, the only two areas that I'm going to be focusing on and that I advise you to focus on or anyone else in our academy or anyone that joins our coffee talks. Speaking of coffee talks, this is being recorded during a coffee talk on a Friday. If you want to be part of our Friday jam sessions, all you need to do is head on over to takeactioncrew.com, takeactioncrew.com. You can join there for free. And then also you'll get access to this smart player that goes through all of our past coffee talks. You can search for whatever you need help with and you will go directly to that coffee talk or inside of multiple coffee talks. It's a really cool smart player. So check that out, takeactioncrew.com and do me a favor and share that with someone that you think needs help in building your brand and just wants to hang around with some cool people on a Friday morning, all right? I'm doing coffee talks Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 a.m. Eastern time. I've been doing them now for months and I'm gonna continue to do them in 2021. So super excited about this jam session. So let's kick it off. How to create a Q1 roadmap to crush 2021 in your business. Okay, so here's the deal. A lot of people are going to try to plan way too far in advance. We do not want to do that. I'm okay with you, uh, you know, thinking maybe 12 months. I think 12 months is always a good benchmark. And what I think that you should do before you even get started is maybe sit down with a pad of paper and write down where were you last year at this time of you listening to this, okay? And if it's in January, 2021, if it's in July, doesn't matter. Where were you 12 months before? And then where do you want to be in the next 12 months? I'm not saying the next three years, the next five years. I wanna look at the next 12 months. Then what we're going to do is we are going to work backwards, okay? So we need to also figure out where we wanna go. That's a big one. Where do you wanna be in 12 months? months. Now there's different ways that we can measure this. Okay. A lot of times it's going to be based off of revenue. Okay. No matter what business you're in, it's always going to be usually a revenue goal. Now, the one thing is here, we need to be realistic about the revenue goal. There's multiple ways that we can do this. There's multiple things that we can focus on, but there's two areas and I'm going to share them with you and we can dig into each of those areas, but there's only two areas that I'm ever going to focus on to get me to my revenue goal, my traffic goal, and email subscriber goal, like all of that stuff. And I think you should put those as goals, right? Having an email list, maybe you're going to uh, say, okay, by the, you know, by the time this is, uh, you know, I'm going to be recording or I'm going to be writing this down next year, 12 months, I want 5,000 subscribers. Like write it down. Then we need to reverse back and go, okay, how many is that per month? How many is that per week? How many is that per day? Right. And then we have targets, smaller targets that we can focus on, but that's what we need to do in anything that we're doing here to try to build out our, our roadmap, our Q1 roadmap. All right. So the other thing is, is we want to start thinking 
about, and I always run through this filter. We always want to think about what actions are we doing? And are these, this is the question here, are these evergreen assets in my business? Okay. So if you're going to do something, I want you to ask yourself that filtering question. Okay. So if you say, you know what? I want to write blog posts. I want to, you know, write articles. I want to do YouTube. I want to uh, do Facebook. Uh, I want to do a Facebook group. I want to do Pinterest. I want to do Instagram. I want to do TikTok. I want whatever, right? You have all these things that you want to do because, well, you hear about it all. There's some shiny objects floating around out there and they will be there. They will be there uh, and they will be, uh, you know, tempting. But I want you when, you, when you start to get these thoughts, okay, as you're starting to think about what you're supposed to be doing, I want you to think about, this is what I always do. Is it an evergreen asset? Okay. Now, if I don't have that, that, uh, you know, that answer, uh, to that question saying, yes, it's an evergreen asset, then I'm not doing it. Okay. Now I'm not saying that I will never add other things to help my evergreen assets, but I am never going to create something and then not have it be something that will come back later and benefit me as well. All right. So evergreen is something that I, I really, really focus on. And it's something that if it's not evergreen, I am not going to do it. I'll give you some examples here. Okay. So let's just say, for example, that you're thinking there's two things that you're thinking. And, and let, let's say one of them is I want to create uh, content for my website. And then the other one is I want to start an Instagram channel or an Instagram, uh, what is it? Account. And I want to get followers, right? Which one of those is evergreen? Instagram is not evergreen. Instagram is a hamster wheel of content, meaning you're constantly going to have to feed that thing. If you post something there today, okay, if you're posting a story, it's going to disappear in 24 hours. If you're posting it uh, as a, uh, let's, uh, an IGTV that will live on, but no one's searching there for it. Right. And then if you post something on your profile or your, your, uh, you know, your main feed, that's just going to sit there. No one's looking for it. It's going to be visible maybe for 24 hours because then it's, you know, buried by other things. That is an example of non evergreen activity. Okay. And an asset now is Instagram an asset for you. The channel itself could be because then anytime you want to bring attention to something, you could use it. But if I had the choice between that and just writing content on my website, I'm going to choose writing content on my website all day, every day, 300, you know, 65 days. Yeah. I'm just, that's what I'm doing. Okay. And the reason why is because if I create a piece of content today, it doesn't get any traffic, but then in two months, three months, it can start getting traffic. And then in a year it can get traffic. And in a two years it can get traffic. That is an evergreen asset. Same thing with an email list. If I build my email list, that's an evergreen channel that I get to use. Meaning I can just draw up an email, hit send and boom, it goes out, right? I get to use it over and over and over again. Instagram, I need to constantly keep feeding that thing. Same thing with TikTok, Snapchat, any of those other social media channels. Okay. So now that we understand what evergreen means, because that's really what I'm looking at, there's two areas that I'm going to focus on in Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. That's all I'm going to focus on. All right. Here they are. Number one, traffic. Traffic. If you can get traffic, and there's multiple ways that you're going to be able to get traffic. If you can get traffic, everything else easy. Okay. Easier, let's say. And the reason why is because if we can get eyeballs, then we can show people what we have to offer. I don't care if, if you currently have an Amazon business only and you don't have your own traffic or you don't have multiple ways to get traffic and you're only relying on pay-per-click on, on Amazon, or if you're hopefully going to be getting ranking inside of, of the algorithm of Amazon, and that's all that you're getting for your traffic, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Cause what happens if that goes away? But if you can get outside traffic, website traffic, email list, maybe even uh, turn on some Facebook ads, paid ads is traffic. And it's traffic that you can pay for, but if you can make it work as far as profitability, heck, turn the faucet on, okay? Uh, YouTube would be, Pinterest would be, all of those are traffic, okay? So 
traffic. That's why when, when we do our, uh, our niche validation, we're always looking at traffic and then monetization. I kind of gave away the second one. Well, the second one isn't monetization, but it leads to monetization. I'll tell you that here in a second. I'm going to talk about this here. Okay. And if you guys are listening, you can't see me. I'm holding it up. This is our playbook. Okay. This here is the exact same roadmap and the same process that I would use today. It has not changed. Why? Because it's evergreen as far as the different pieces of the business, the, the assets that we're creating are all going to be built like this right here. Now, I will say this. If you're listening to this and you have not went through the playbook, do yourself a favor, okay, and grab a copy. Brandcreatorsbook.com. Yes, you will buy me a cup of coffee but it will be well worth it. I promise you because this lays everything out. And I would also recommend printing it out like I have here and just, you know, bring it over to office max staples, any office supply store and have the thing printed and bound. And I'm not kidding you. I mean, I mean, just go through this and this here is going to walk you through, and this will help you line up what you're supposed to be doing in your Q, your Q1. Okay. Because I, everyone's going to be a little bit different, but what I will say is if you look at those, these two areas, traffic, and the second one I'll give you here in a second, if you just focus on those two areas, you're building assets that are going to like compound interest is going to comp compound on each other over time. They're going to grow. They're going to get bigger. You know, some are going to do better than others. Some will take off six months, a year from now. Some will get traffic six years from now, or, you know, that you're, you know, thinking to yourself, well, that thing didn't really do that. Well, boom, all of a sudden it, get, it takes off. Okay. So I want you to be thinking about whatever you're going to be doing. I want you to always be thinking traffic and ever, I want you to be thinking evergreen, but then I want you to think traffic. Okay. In this one area. So if you are thinking to yourself, what, what do I need to do? Well, number one, if you have not started your website, if you have not started creating content, that's very simple. That's going to be like, uh, we, we have uh, five stages that we cover here inside of the Academy, uh, inside of brand creators Academy. And basically that is stage one is niche uh, niche discovery and validation. Stage two is going to be the foundation. And in those two, we need those two up and running. And then we move into stage three, which is list building, stage four, which is monetization, stage five, which is growth. Okay. So no, no matter where you are, you have to pick out what are your activities going to be. And then what you need to do is you need to design an outline or a plan to follow every single day. And I strongly recommend when you find out what these targets are, because that's what we're doing here. We're creating targets. Once you find out what these targets are in your situation, then you're just going to work backwards and go, okay, what do I need to do, you know, to make this happen? I need to, I need to get uh, 10 pieces of content that I'm going to have written. Okay. So you need to spend maybe a day or two doing that. That's in your daily or weekly tasks, what to do. Then once you get them written, you have to, you know, put them on your website and optimize them. That's another step. So all of the actionable steps happen after you figure out your targets and what you're going to be doing. Okay. So again, let's kind of go back a little bit. Traffic. That's what I'm focusing on. Okay. Is traffic. This right here, what I'm doing right now, this podcast, this coffee talk, this here is evergreen, not necessarily on, well, it is on Facebook, but on Facebook, I'm not looking at it as being on Facebook where people are going to search. Now on the podcast already have already have a listenership. So by me doing this, this is an evergreen piece that people can listen to now or a year from now. Okay. But it also gets posted up on our blog. So it, you see what happened there, right? One piece of content that gets distributed on different platforms. Some are evergreen. Some are going to be just where the traffic is right now. But the thing is with Facebook is this right here is technically an asset that I could drive paid traffic to whenever I want. So it's technically an evergreen asset in a sense. Okay. So again, we want to look at what are we going to be creating for our traffic assets and are they going to be evergreen? I hope that they are for you. Okay. So that's what we're focusing on traffic. Okay. Just, just have that on a post-it note on your computer traffic. Okay. And then start thinking about what are going to be your ways of generating traffic in 2021 and then break it down. What are you going to be doing in Q1 
And that Q1 could lead into Q2, Q3, Q4. Okay. So traffic to me is, is a huge deal. And again, we cover that inside of the playbook where when we validate a niche, we are looking very first, we're, very first thing we're looking at is traffic potential and then how we can get traffic if that checks. We move into monetization. So the second thing is offers. Okay. Yes. Monetization, but offers means getting paid. Now there's multiple different ways that we can do this. Okay. But again, I want to think about this. Is this a one-off launch? Is this, uh, something that is going to be trending and then it's going to go away. Those are the things that I want to avoid. Okay. So perfect example. I'll give you an example of what an evergreen, uh, piece of content looks like that could lead to a sale and it doesn't even have to be your products. So and I just went over this with, uh, it was Octavio in uh, our academy. We just did a hot seat call. Uh, and basically I said to him, he's already created over, I think 50 plus articles, getting traffic, ranking on, on uh, Google already. What I want to see him do now is spend, and th this, this could be maybe Q1 is going to be just this. Do your, do your research so you can find products that you are going to review or put five best fishing lures to catch uh, or to, to use at night, right? That blog post is going to have five different items that he is an affiliate for. So that's just one post, right? Now, that's an evergreen asset, but it's also an evergreen money-making asset. Because if that thing gets picked up today and someone finds it, they can buy it. If they find it three months from now, they can, they can buy it. If they, if they find it 12 months from now, they can buy it or two years from now they can buy it. Right. And it's always going to lead back to a sale. Okay. Now, not everyone's going to buy it, but the thing is, is a lot of people will search. That's why in that search, uh, you know, the finding your keywords in this phase, you would want to find maybe 10 different posts that are going to cover multiple products that you would be talking about and sharing the pros and cons. Okay. Now what we've done is we've created 10 assets on our website that can be found on Google, but let's take it one step further. Our other asset that we've built, one of our traffic assets is our email list. Guess what we get to do with our email list. We get to tell them, got a new blog post, go check it out. And then we drive those people over to our website where that post resides. Now, guess what? We can take it another step further. We can create some type of email sequence that when someone joins, they go through and we can sprinkle in, in our autoresponder that they can start getting these. Even if I, if I sent out a broadcast email today and someone joins my list a month later, or, you know, a month from now, they're not going to get that unless I send a broadcast. What if I set up a sequence that went over different things that you need for bass fishing? And maybe I sprinkle in four different posts that are, you know, these review type posts or these posts about different products. Do you think that I'm going to start to get a steady flow of affiliate sales? Of course, because someone comes in as a new subscriber, they go through my sequence. They're always going to be seeing it. Okay. So that's another way, but let me, let me back up. You see what we did there? We created an evergreen asset and that asset can keep working for us over and over and over again. Okay. That's what we want to focus on in this offer phase or the offer stage. Okay. So again, traffic, if we got the offers, we, we don't have any traffic. We, we can't make any sales, right? So offers. Okay. Let's talk. Let's talk more about offers. What's something else? Digital products right? We did a whole fast track workshop on digital products, creating your own digital product in under three hours. Uh, if you want to check that out, you can go over to brandcreators.com forward slash digital, and that'll take you to that workshop. Very, very affordable. I would encourage you to go through it. If you're in the Academy, it's already in there for you. Plus we have another uh, bonus in there. It's called profit maximizer, which allows you to create order bumps and deadline sequences and things like that to increase the revenue that you'll be making on these digital products. But a digital product, if done right, is a digital asset that is evergreen. Give you an example. We did another workshop called email list building fast track workshop. We created it. We did it live and we retaught it. 
And now we are driving paid traffic to the email list building fast track workshop. It's an asset now that we get to drive new visitors to that we created three months ago, but it's evergreen and it's relevant and it's not going to go out of date because we, we thought about that when you're creating these you know, different products, you want to make sure that you're not creating something that can go out of date that easily. Okay. And that, that can get tricky when you're like showing people Facebook and, you know, different types of tools, things can change. And if we got to update it here and there, we can, but the principles are the same. So evergreen assets for the offers is really important as well. Or maybe it's, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do two promotions this coming month, or maybe I'm going to do two promotions in the first quarter, which by the way, uh, in my little Q1 plan for brand creators, uh, here's what we're doing. We're going to be doing two different fast track workshops. One of them will most likely be niche discovery and validation, and one will be content creation fast track workshop. So those two will be done. What's going to happen? We're going to basically promote those. We're going to teach those. We're going to turn them into an evergreen digital asset. And then we're going to turn on Facebook ads and start to drive traffic to those evergreen assets. That's all I'm focusing on. Like those are the two areas, traffic offers. Okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to think about that. If you are right now thinking to yourself, okay, uh, you know, I'm starting to, you know, see some traffic on my website. Uh, I have a couple things that they could purchase. I want you to do is start thinking about how could you ramp up your traffic or add a traffic asset? And then how can you add an offer? And, and if that's all you did in Q1, we're way ahead of the game. Now, if you were thinking, well, Scott, uh, I think I want to create an Instagram and I, I Instagram, uh, channel and I want to get a whole bunch of followers and I want to post there every single day and I want to drive people to my website. I don't think that's the best use of your time. It's personally, it's not what I'm doing. Okay. Um, now could you bolt that on? If you've already got those other things in place and you're like, I want to add Instagram, then add Instagram and make that your focus. Maybe you give it a three month test. Maybe you give it a three month test. And if you see, okay, after three months, I put in the time and the work, let's reevaluate this. It looks like it didn't really work out or yes, it worked out. I got a whole bunch of visitors. You got to track that stuff in order to see if it's worth your time. All right. So those are the two areas. Um, that's how I would set up my first quarter in 2021. And I mean, to be, you know, to be real here, I would do that for the entire year. I would just chunk it down per quarter. All right. So that's what I would do. Sit down, make sure that you run that little question filter. Is this an evergreen activity in my business? Okay. You got to ask yourself that, but then you have to also see where are you right now, right? Where are you? Where do you want to go? And if that revenue goal is a thousand bucks a month, well, then you got to say, okay, how am I going to do that? What kind of offers are going to be in my brand or how much traffic do I have that I'm going to turn on Ezoic and that's, they're going to pay me 300 bucks. Okay. There's 300. Now I need 700 more. Where's the 700 going to come from. Right. And then we need to start to reverse what we're going to be doing. All right. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, but again, I would focus on two areas. That's it. And then I would need to evaluate. So sit down where you are and see where you need to focus your time. Okay. And it's pretty obvious if you sit down and you're like, well, I can't create an offer and give it to anybody because I don't have traffic. So we got to say, okay, where is my traffic going to come from? Well, I'm going to write content for my website, but that's going to take extra time. So maybe I'll build an email list at the same time. So this way here, I could let the, con the people know I have content, but then I can also send them offers. That's what I would do. All right. So again, it's going to be different for everyone, but that's what I would do. Sit down, map out where you are right now, ask yourself those questions and then devise your plan to execute. And then I would sit down weekly and I would say, okay, what is this week's three, you know, big three that I'm going to be tackling and then chunk them down per day. And if you only have an hour a day, then what is that one hour of activity going to be? And I would tune out, I would tune out any of those shiny objects. Just saying I would tune them out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and uh, let's see if we got any questions here. Uh, what's up, Roland? Uh, 
let's see. <laughs> Geo, ha, PPC ate a lot of my profits. Yeah, it can. Salama is in the house. What's up, Salama? Happy New Year. Thanks for showing up today. We appreciate you. We pre I appreciate you, Salama, for showing up. Derek, Atlanta in the house. Better late than never. I'm watching the replay. Got to start the year right. Awesome. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, let's see. Okay. If your experience uh, or in your experience, is it better to divide your revenue goal by quarter evenly or less in the first quarter since you are setting up your foundation? How much less? How do you do it? Okay. So I think with what you're saying is, let's say that your goal was, I want to make uh, $50,000 for the year, right? Then I would break it down per month and then I would break it down per day. Now we know that day one, you're not going to be able to get there. So what we need to do is devise the plan of like, okay, how are we going to get there? And, and some people need to be more aggressive than others. Okay. Meaning for you, it might be this, I'm going to set up my website. Bottom line is we got to have our home base set up. If we don't have our home base set up and, and it can be very simple. It could be domain name, hosting, WordPress, one piece of content. That's your home base. Doesn't have to be like a hundred posts or anything like that. So once that is done, we have our foundation. Now we can start saying, okay, let's, let's build our email list. And with that email list, we are going to create offers uh, for them. And we're going to run promotions bottom line. Like that's it. Now that could be your offers. It could be someone else's offer, but that's what you need to do in that Q1. And then that is where you will get to, uh, potentially your revenue goal. But like you said, it might be hard because it might take two months to get to where you're going to be able to start generating that income, maybe shorter, maybe longer. Um, but that's, it's a little trickier when you don't have everything kind of set up yet. So realistically to say to go to $50,000 your first year in profit might be stretch or, or a stretch, but that's okay. I'd rather you stretch and then maybe you fall short at 40,000, right? Um, so that's what I would say there in the very beginning. If you do not have this stuff set up, it's going to be a little bit harder because you're going to be doing a lot of the, uh, of the groundwork in the first quarter, maybe. Right. And then you might have to say, I got to break this down in, in over three quarters. So then you have to compress that a little bit. Hopefully that helped. Uh, Derek, no, sh no more shiny objects. Yes, please. Uh, Karen, what's up? Happy new year. Looking forward to 2021. I have so many plans for my brand. Awesome. Um, how much will you spend on traffic that is not organic on Facebook, Google, etc.? Well, right now I am only willing to spend on Facebook because I'm a believer in trying to get one thing working versus, you know, two, three, or four. Um, and I think that's a problem that a lot of people make is they're like, okay, I'm going to advertise on YouTube. I'm going to advertise on uh, Google, uh, you know, whatever. That's not what I am about. Uh, I am going to try to get one thing working. So an example is email list building fast track workshop. We are just starting to get really serious about getting that to convert at a break even or a profit. Okay. And that is it. I'm not driving traffic yet to the digital product creation, fast track workshop. I'm not driving traffic to brand creators Academy. I'm not driving traffic there because I want to get the one working first or at least close. All right. So then once that thing gets working, then we can go, let's try to, let's try it over here on YouTube. See what happens. Right. So getting one, um, right is going to be uh, to me, a better plan because then you only focus on getting that one thing, you know, kind of working. Um, so that's what I would say there, um, Derek. Hey, Jason, what's up? New year, a couple of days filled out, a but haven't gotten anything back. Um, that's interesting, Jason, because I know, uh, I know uh, specifically that you got um, two um, different messages and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I sent you a video. Um, and a lot of people don't know this if they did not, um, if they didn't fill out the application, but what I do is when someone fills out an application, when we are open, I will send you a private video, um, saying, Hey Jason, thanks so much for filling out the application. I looked it over. Here's what we think, blah, blah, blah. Um, send me, uh, send me a message, Jason. I'd like to look into that a little bit further. Um, I'd be curious to see why you didn't get that. Cause whatever email that you used, uh, is the one that I would have sent that to. So you might want to check your bulk spam promo folder, whatever. Um, but you can just email me too, Scott at brandcreators.com, And I can look into that for you. Um, Salama, 
How do you deal with shiny objects? Being uh, multi-passionate about different niches. Yeah, it's it's a struggle, but over the years, I know that when I stay focused and when I focus on, like I just said, on the one thing, um, I'm going to get better results and it's going to be less stressful. So my my idea here is to just tune everything else out. And, and, and sometimes it's tuning other people out. Like I don't, really subscribe to a lot of people's, uh, you know, uh, emails, only people that I want to know more information about. Uh, I'll give you an example. There's a, uh, a dividend, uh, dividend stock, uh, newsletter that a guy sends out. And I'm, I'm kind of into that. Like I, I want to know more about dividend paying stocks and stuff. And he sends out an email once a week and, uh, I want that email, right. But I'm not going to sign up for five other people talking about dividend paying stocks. It's just going to confuse me. So I'm going to pick one in that area and I'm going to use that one, um, as my information. Um, and if I like them, obviously I'm going to want, so it, a lot of times, a lot of times it's just, it is shiny objects and it's like, Oh, wow, maybe that might work for me. That would be faster. Oh, that, you know, we have to, we have to get out of that mindset that we think things are going to be a lot quicker or they're going to be a shortcut because in reality, uh, it's usually, if it's too good to be true, it's usually good, too good to be true. Or it was a one-off thing. Okay. So I, I don't know how else to say it, but you have to get disciplined with yourself. And if it means you coming here and having me keep you di being disciplined, then come here. Um, because I will tell you, I am not going to, uh, veer off the path where I'm going to say, uh, I'm not going to create content anymore because over here I can do, uh, you know, this, I can do Twitch now. Twitch is a new thing. I mean, I'm hearing about it from my my son and a lot of the younger generation is using Twitch, right? A lot of people on there, not just for video games. I don't, I don't even want to hear about it right now. Don't even want to hear about it because all I'm focusing on is good old Google with content, a little Pinterest. I'll sprinkle a little Pinterest in there because that's been proven. That's doing well. Okay. And uh, I'm going to focus on my email list. That's my areas. And I'm going to create some good offers. That's it. So we, we have to be disciplined on who we're following and who we're paying attention to. And then also what we are, um, wanting to do. You have to pick a niche, even if you know that it might not be your niche for the next five years, you gotta get started. You gotta get in the game. If you want to learn, if you don't get in the game, you're not really learning. You're, you're learning concepts, but you're not actually doing it. When you, when you're able to, to see a result because of what you did, that's how you learn and actually walking through the steps. So my advice for you or anyone on the shiny object train is just, you gotta get disciplined with yourself and you gotta tell yourself right here today, I am going to commit to myself and I am going to avoid shiny objects by only following or, 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 uh, doing the things, focusing on the things that I know will build out my brand. And that's it. That's it. Oh, let's see here. Uh, oh, Jason says you did. Heck yes. Ha ha. Will do. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And I actually, I thought, I think I shot you two videos because I think you responded to my, my video. Uh, I did a video ask, which you re responded through text. I read it all. And then from there, I also did a reply. So very interesting, Jason. I'm going to have to look into that. I got to make sure that everyone else that I sent videos to got them too. That's it's kind of uh, crazy. Uh, okay, cool. Jake, I'm in the new parent niche. Can my first offer be a low price, like $12 or something and provide a list of things needed for the first 60 days with a newborn? Um, you could absolutely do that, but I'm just not sure. And again, you'd have to test it. Uh, I'm just not sure that for 12 bucks, someone is going to spend, or someone's going to spend 12 bucks on a list of things that they need with the first 60 days. That'd be a good lead magnet. And then on the back end of that, you would offer something like the ultimate new parenting guide or something like that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, you could test it. Um, but in that space, I think you're going to probably do better if you have a free lead magnet and then you bolt a thank you page offer on there. I think personally. Uh, Helene, what is up? New profile picture. Looks like that might be from last night. Looks like you had a good time. Happy new year. 2021 is the time to monetize. We'll be breaking down these steps, uh, covered in today's coffee talk for sure. Um, I think that wasn't a, was that a question, Helene? 
Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I think that you're saying that we have to, we, we got to basically get this done. And I think that what I talked about here in the coffee talk, you're going to, you're going to use, I think, Helene, I don't, I don't know if I understand that totally. Uh, Derek, shiny object syndrome is real. Too many. So gurus is not good. They just keep selling stuff and take you in a different direction. Yeah, exactly. So Derek, what have I told you to do before? And I'm going to tell you again here in 2021, let's clean out the closet. Let's clean out the closet. Let's clean out that inbox. If you get an email from someone that you subscribe to, just open the email, go to the bottom, hit unsubscribe, and you're done. Just get off the list. Let's get off the list, okay? And if you do that, you're going to be cleaning out your inbox. If you start, if you keep seeing that them come back, then you need to report them. That's all. Um, is Twitch Amazon? I don't believe so, but I could be wrong. Uh, Let's see here. Geo, you have a limited time. Focus on what matters. Yes. Um, okay, Aldo. What's up, Aldo? Um, let's see. Hi. In the content creation workshop, do you go into website building too, or is it more the type of content to deliver? Yeah, well, we don't have the workshop done yet. That won't be done until first quarter in January of 2021. Inside of our academy, we do go through um, content and we go through website building. Um, it basically happens in stage two, the foundation. And stage two is really picking your domain name, getting your website set up with WordPress, um, using a basic theme, and then planning out your first uh, three to four pieces of content, but actually doing research for 10 different pieces of content. And that is everything that is done there. What we're going to most likely be doing is a content creation workshop that will only be about how to find content in your niche that is getting traffic, but also what types and when to create these and how to create a content schedule. That's what the content creation workshop will be most likely. Um, so yes, uh, Jason, I found, uh, Hey, I found it. Um, what a way to start this new quarter. We'll watch your response after today's coffee talk. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, we are currently, uh, we, we closed, um, the Academy, but, um, just message me and, um, we can see what we can do to, uh, to, you know, send you out another invite. Uh, yeah, Salama. Thanks. Little, little time for a sip of coffee here. All right. Uh, let's see, Derek, I will commit to building foundation first to build my brand first email list, traffic and offers. You know what, Derek, if you write that down, Write that down on your pad of paper, right? 2021 goals, Q1. I will commit to building the foundation first, building my brand first, email list, traffic, and offers. Like, that's that's it. Like, that's the order, you know? And just tune everything else out, okay? Uh, let's see. Okay, Google Ads versus Google SEO. What is more important for a brand? I think they both are good. I think they're both going to um, to bring you targeted traffic. Google ads are great for search traffic because they're based off of a search query. Um, the cool thing about SEO is you're not paying for it and it's, it's evergreen. It's going to always be there. So I would say in the beginning, if you are in a rush and you want to just run like uh, Google ads, then do it. But ultimately, you're going to want a steady flow of traffic. And uh, I think taking time to work on the SEO would probably be a wise thing to do. Uh, yeah, no problem, Jake. Oh, this is a good one. Salama, best decisions you made in 2020 for your biz. Well, one of them is we sold it. So that was a good decision. We sold one of our e-commerce brands. Um, that was a great decision. And it was also a very crazy time and a stressful time because we had a deal that was locked up and then it fell through because of COVID. Um, and all of that stuff. Um, but we sold that brand. I'm very happy about that. Uh, so that was, uh, that was a big decision that we made and, uh, and it worked out really well. Uh, so that was a, that was a good decision. Uh, the other decision I think is to start brand creators Academy, which we started over just over a year ago. Um, and that was probably one of the best decisions too, because now my focus is only on that. It's only on these little workshops and everything leads back to the Academy. Simplify. Like, I think simplifying any business for me has been the best decision that I've made. Um, and 
yeah, I, I just think that is, th those are two right there for you. Uh, Geo, uh, <laughs> yes, actually, uh, the guitar did get undusted, uh, over the holidays. My son-in-law, uh, came here and, uh, we actually built a couple of guitars. He bought a kit to build your own guitar and we spent a few days building a guitar, um, or guitars. So, but yes, um, I actually have on my, my personal list of things. I'm going to schedule guitar lessons with myself two, two days a week. Um, so that's going to be happening. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to schedule that in Jamie, uh, 2021 will be the same as you traffic and monetization. My digital product will be ready in a few days. Excited for the launch. I'm excited for the launch, Jamie and Jamie, make sure that you share with us in the Academy, your process that you're going to be going through just so we can kind of give you another set of eyes. We can get, that's what we did with Matt. That's what we did with Octavio who just launched their digital products. Then we bolted on to their thank you page. And now, uh, Matt bolted on his, uh, follow-up deadline sequence. So make sure that you, uh, that you get plugged in there and, um, and let us see what you're doing and even the flow of your, your emails and your launches and stuff like that. And if we can help you, we would love to do that. So that's awesome. Yeah, no problem. Uh, let's see, Geo. I make it a point to revisit important books at the beginning of the year. I just listened to Scott's take action effect book this morning and I felt re-energized and inspired. It's such a motivational book, the audio book, especially if you haven't listened to it yet, I suggest you do it. Best thing ever. Yeah. The audio book. Do I have a copy of the, yeah, I have a copy on my desk here. Uh, so the copy, so this is what Geo's talking about. This was a huge deal for me in 2019, um, is writing this. Um, but the audio book, uh, has bonus little, uh, sections in there or me kind of going off script. And, um, that's what I love about audiobooks too, is, is being able to listen to other authors go off script. Uh, but I also liked doing it myself. I enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot of fun. So thank you for that, Gio. Um, uh, I'm glad that you enjoyed it and I'm glad that you're re energized. Uh, Oh, doing coffee talk with granddaughter is one of them. Yes. Uh, okay. And Derek is convert kit still your choice of autoresponders. Yes, it is. And I've got a quick little story. I wasn't going to share this yet, but I'll share it. And, um, just because we're kind of all hanging out here, having coffee together. Um, so my son, Scotty, uh, he has a vertical training business on the side, very, very small, a uh, handful of clients. Uh, and, uh, he wants to, get that going a little bit more. Right. And so his goal is to have 10 clients right now. He might be at like, I think three to four, uh, and they come every single week. Um, and he's had as many as like six or seven at once, but overall he's had well over 20, but he wants to be able to get new clients in. And so this way here, he can, uh, you know, add, you know, add those clients to his, his, uh, his monthly set of clients. He wants 10 that that's the goal. So, uh, we, uh, we, uh, you know, I, I practice what I preach. We, uh, we ran, we started an ad yesterday. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because convert kit allows you to create your landing page. Did that yesterday in convert kit for him. Um, and then we set up a, uh, an email that goes out to those people in convert kit. And then we drove traffic started yesterday, late yesterday, and we're spending five bucks a day. Okay. And, uh, that five bucks yesterday, we didn't even spend all five. We spent a dollar 69 and we got one, um, one person that uh, had to fill out their first name, their last name, their phone number, their email, and then they have to hit submit. And, uh, they are targeted within a 25 mile radius of our area. It's uh, parent. And we're only going after right now, volleyball, uh, players, girl volleyball players. Uh, we will be doing basketball as well. Uh, and, uh, yeah. So convert kit saved us yesterday. We basically were able to set up a landing page, set up an auto, uh, or an auto automatic message that gets sent out an autoresponder. And, uh, we collected the information all through convert kit and get this. It's on the free account. We didn't even pay for it yet, which we will once we get more subscribers, but they offer such a great plan now that you're able to do that. So we got one person in less than 24 hours to fill that out. Cost us a dollar 69. I believe it was to be honest with you, I'd spend $5 per, uh, sign up. And here's why 
his sessions are, I believe, 30 or 40 bucks. So do the math. He does only bundles of four, by the way. So I would spend, I don't know, 50 bucks to get one client. Why? Because I know that that client can keep coming and keep paying. All right. So again, just wanted to share that with you because you brought up ConvertKit and I was spending some time yesterday, New Year's Eve, by the way, setting up an ad, um, did the ad myself, by the way, um, following Chris Schaefer's instructions. Uh, everything's changed since the last time I set up an ad, um, but set it up, got it running, spending five bucks a day and already got one, uh, one person to sign up. So yeah, pretty excited about that. Anyway, uh, best decision for Scott doing coffee talk with his granddad. That's what you were saying. Yes, it, it would. That was a lot of fun. Um, that was when she was a newborn. Uh, oh, is ConvertKit working on upsellability? I don't know. They probably will. Um, the way that we can get around that, and we teach this inside of the digital product creation fast track workshop, is um, the way around that is to use something like Gumroad, which is also free, but it's not technically an upsell, although it kind of is. And here's what I mean. When you're in Gumroad, you can create different products and you can see those at checkout. So if you wanted to sign up for just the ebook, you can create another product that has the ebook plus audio book for a certain price. And when you go there, you'll see the different options and you can select what option you want. So that's somewhat of an upsell. It's not as good as something like Kajabi or ClickFunnels or SamCard or any of those, but it's, it's pretty close. It's, it, it'll work. Um, but again, that's another way that you can do it, but I, I would love it if Con convert kit offered that. I know that they're going to be working on subscriptions, but I'm not quite sure if they're going to offer the upsells, but I'm, I I'm thinking they probably will eventually. Uh, let's see. Oh, where can we find info on your upsell creation workshop? Yeah. Uh, we do not have that, um, uh, for sale outside of the order bump. Um, Salama, if you want to message me, uh, or just send me an email, Scott at brandcreators.com. I can uh, see if we can send you over that separately. Um, and I know that we talked about adding that into the portal for the digital product creation fast track workshop as if you had not purchased that yet. Um, but yeah, that would be a good one. That that goes over order bumps. It goes over also uh, creating a deadline sequence inside of your email provider convert kit. All right. Oh, and uh, Derek says, will you have more training on how to use Facebook in the upcoming workshop? Uh, not really. I mean, Facebook is so, <laughs> it's so hard because it's always changing. So I would never want, again, here we are, right? I'm going to put it through the filter. Is this an evergreen asset? Um, if I created just a, a, a workshop with Chris on, on Facebook in a month, it could be outdated. So in our workshops, like digital product creation workshop, or even in the email list building fast track workshop, there is separate Facebook training in there. That training we can update. It's a, it's like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So if something changes drastically, we can just change out that element. So Derek, I would say, no, um, you don't need it. You're already part of the email list building, uh, fast track workshop and the digital product fast track workshop. There's training in there. If that training is, um, is not, uh, up to, uh, uh, you know, to the new changes, then we would be changing that. So there's really no reason for you to need anything more than what we just gave you. Um, so hopefully that helps you. I'm not, so I'm, so here's the thing. I'm not going to sell you a workshop on Facebook ads. <laughs> like, let's just say that it's already inside of our other ones. Um, and that's all that you would need. All right. So guys do me a favor. I'm going to wrap this up here. This went longer than I thought. Take action crew.com. Do me a favor. Share this with someone, share this with a group that you belong to, share it with someone or people that you think would get value from this, uh, this coffee talk or these coffee talks, the jam sessions happen on Fridays, uh, at 10 AM Eastern time. But you guys know I show up Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 AM Eastern time. And, uh, if you want to hang out, talk about business, talk about life, motivation, inspiration, all that good stuff, then come here, hang out, bring a friend. That's all I ask. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and work on building out your brand. And if you are inside of Brand Creators Academy, man, oh man, I am so excited for what we're going to be doing inside the Academy this year. It's a lot of what we've been doing, but man, oh man, it's going to get even more fun because uh, got some cool things that we're going to be working on. We have a brand new a brand new monetization strategy and uh, it's it's working pretty well. And uh, I'm going to share that with you uh, inside the Academy. And then also uh, I'm going to be revealing our uh, second 
niche that we were building out as a case study. And I'm going to share that with you because, uh, well, I think it's about time. And uh, I think it would just be interesting for you guys to see uh, another example and then also what we plan to do in the future with it. All right. So anyway, that's it, guys. Have an awesome, well, January 1st, if you're watching this or listening to this on January 1st. If you're listening to this later on the podcast, happy whatever day it is, but happy new year. 2021 is going to be awesome. And uh, if you guys have any questions and you want to ask them, head on over to takeactioncrew.com. We can do it there. And uh, that would be amazing. All right, guys, take care.